The DeSantis campaign uses AI-generated photos in an attack ad on Trump. DeepMind speeds up sorting algorithms, but Hacker News is not impressed. Microsoft trains a powerful Llama variant called Orca by training on the explanation traces of GPT-4, and Mark Andreessen explains why AI will save the world. Welcome to AI News with Samuel Albany. A DeSantis attack ad uses AI-generated images of Trump embracing Fauci, according to AFP Fact Check. In a telltale sign of AI-generated imagery, the article notes that the text is incomprehensible and does not properly spell the White House where it should. The UK will host the first major global summit on AI safety, according to a government press briefing. The summit will bring together key countries, leading tech companies and researchers to agree safety measures to evaluate and monitor the most significant risks from AI. This announcement was followed by comments from a tech CEO saying that the West should aim to stay ahead in the AI race. The boss of software firm Palantir, Alex Karp, said it was only those with no products who wanted a pause. Forbes published a piece about the CEO of Stability, Imad Mostak, stating that he has a history of exaggeration. In particular, the article claims that interviews with 13 current and former employees and more than two dozen investors, collaborators and former colleagues, as well as pitch decks and internal documents, suggest his recent success has been bolstered by exaggeration and dubious claims. Emad responded to the Forbes article on his blog, describing the comments in Forbes as false accusations and misrepresentations, and expressing frustration that despite our team spending weeks going back and forth with Forbes to correct the record, they have clearly chosen to ignore the truth on many of these issues. Bard is getting better at logic and reasoning, according to Google. Using a technique called implicit code execution, Bard now identifies prompts that might benefit from logical code and writes it under the hood. Then it executes it and uses the result to generate a more accurate response. This has achieved improvements on internal challenge benchmarks by approximately 30%. Two researchers with different perspectives on the risks of AI, Yoshua Bengio and Andrew Ung, met for a conversation. Ung noted that they both agreed that a good step forward for AI risk is to articulate the concrete scenarios where AI can lead to significant harm. Sam Altman continued his world tour answering questions about topics like the challenges of competing with open AI. Where is it that a team from India, you know, three super smart engineers with, you know, not a hundred million, but let's say 10 million, could actually build something truly substantial. Look, the way this works is we're going to tell you it's totally hopeless to compete with us on training foundation models you shouldn't try, and it's your job to, like, try anyway. And I believe both of those things. Faster sorting algorithms discovered using deep reinforcement learning from DeepMind is published in Nature. Deep reinforcement learning is used to develop AlphaDev, which discovered small sorting algorithms from scratch that outperformed previously known human benchmarks. On various small sorting settings, AlphaDev constructed assembly instruction sequences that either matched or slightly outperformed existing implementations, leading to speedups across a range of scenarios. The resulting algorithms have been integrated into the LLVM standard C++ sort library. There was some community commentary on the work. One popular post on Hacker News took a critical perspective. As someone that knows a thing or two about sorting, bullshit. No new algorithms were uncovered, and the work here did not lead to the claimed improvements. On Twitter, Demetrius Papaliopoulos found that he was able to prompt GPT-4 into removing the same superfluous instruction identified by AlphaDev in one of its algorithms. Although in follow-up discussion with Peter Fedak, it wasn't decisively clear whether this was due to a hallucination. Founder and venture capitalist Mark Andreessen has written an article entitled Why AI Will Save the World. I am here to bring the good news. AI will not destroy the world, and in fact may save it, he writes. Drawing from previous historical examples, such as the 1920s prohibition of alcohol in the US, he characterizes two categories of individuals among those pushing for regulation. The Baptists are true believers that feel that regulations are required to prevent disaster. The bootleggers are those who stand to profit from new regulations. He suggests that bootleggers have a history of winning, pointing to the larger banks that emerged from the financial crises as an example. Andreessen asks several questions. Will AI kill us all, ruin our society, take all our jobs, and lead to crippling inequality? The answers are no, 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 and no. He also considers whether AI will lead to bad people doing bad things, 
and asserts that the answer is yes, but the solution is not to ban the technology, but to work on mitigations. Finally, he outlines a plan, which includes the directive that big AI companies and startups should be allowed to build AI as fast and aggressively as they can. Progressive learning from complex explanation traces of GPT-4 from Microsoft Research develops Orca, a 13 billion parameter model that learns to imitate the reasoning process of large foundation models. It is found that Orca surpasses Vicuna 13b by more than 100% in complex zero-shot reasoning benchmarks, slightly outperforming ChatGPT on Big Bench Hard, though still a little behind ChatGPT on professional and academic exams. These results are achieved by explanation tuning, which augments traditional instruction tuning query response pairs with detailed responses from GPT-4 that explain the reasoning of the teacher as it generates the response. Compared to other models trained on OpenAI outputs, Orca trains with significantly more data, using 5 million ChatGPT outputs and 1 million GPT-4 outputs. The authors say they are working with their legal team to release the weights. Uncertainty about the future does not imply that AGI will go well, writes Loro Langosco. He writes that it is common to encounter arguments to the effect of the following. It's overconfident to estimate a high probability of doom. Humans are usually bad at predicting the future, especially when it comes to novel technologies like AGI. When you account for how uncertain your predictions are, your estimate should at most be some low number. Lawyers suggest that uncertainty is not the key factor here, but rather to what degree AGI risk represents a default success scenario in which accidents are rare, versus a default failure scenario in which accidents are the norm. If AGI risk is mostly default failure, then uncertainty is a reason for pessimism rather than optimism. How far can camels go? Exploring the state of instruction tuning on open resources notes that despite recent claims that open models can be on par with SOTA proprietary models, these claims are often accompanied by limited evaluation, making it difficult to perform comparisons. To address this, the paper provides a comprehensive evaluation of instruction tuning resources. Their evaluations find that the best model in any given evaluation reaches on average 83% of ChatGPT performance and 68% of GPT-4 performance, and suggests that base model performance remains particularly critical. The authors therefore suggest that further investment in building better base models and instruction tuning data is required to close the gap. Code is released to reproduce their experiments. We may finally crack maths, but should we? asks Ferenc Hazar. He ponders three implications. First, there are likely to be dual-use developments that arise from the breakthrough, with possible applications in areas like cybercrime and malicious software development. Second, a breakthrough in mathematical theorem proving may further accelerate the development and deployment of general-purpose AI tools, and that can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on your perspective. Finally, there may be a loss of meaning. For many, mathematics is not only a job, but a pursuit they derive meaning from. Inference time intervention, eliciting truthful answers from a language model, is work from Harvard that proposes a technique to enhance the truthfulness of large language models. ITI works by first identifying a set of sparse attention heads with high linear probing accuracy for truthfulness. Then, during inference, activations are shifted along these truth-correlated directions. ITI is found to improve Alpaca truthful QA performance from 32.5% to 65.1%. Their study suggests that true and false samples can be separated to some extent with appropriate projection. Code is released. Turning to useful resources, a site named the Prompt Engineering Guide from Elvis Saravia gathers together all the latest papers, learning guides, models, lectures, references, new LLM capabilities, and tools related to prompt engineering. You can find it at promptingguide.ai. AI Coffee Break with Letitia is a YouTube channel that offers light-hearted, bite-sized machine learning videos. Letitia combines entertaining coffee bean animations with the key, nitty-gritty technical details of papers. I highly recommend the channel, which can be found at AI Coffee Break on YouTube. Now it's time for Samuel's book recommendation. This week, I'm recommending The Hard Thing About Hard Things by Ben Horowitz. This book is an entertaining collection of strategies, anecdotes, and management advice for when things are going seriously badly. Last, I'll mention a project I am working on called Filter. We're focused on fact-checking ChatGPT outputs and are developing new techniques for doing this efficiently. If you're interested in finding out more, you can find our Discord link in the video description. Also in the video description, you can find links to the mentioned articles. I hope you have a wonderful day.